What's poppin' T-Squad? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shea Bell Collective Season 5 Episode 4 Review. This week's episode was really, really good. I got a lot to say because I got a lot of notes. And by the way, for anybody out there that watches this review today and comments in the comments section, please remember to be respectful and that you do not have to agree with my opinion. I actually encourage you to have your own thoughts and opinions. But what we won't do over here on this channel is come at people about their opinions on a reality show. Me or other T-Squad members included. I do read the comments. So you will get blocked. Point blank in the period. Because some of y'all take it too far and are just fucking insane. Okay. But anywho. So, we pick up where we left off last week with Glenn telling Leticia that he has quit his job to her surprise and she is thoroughly upset because they need his insurance. Uh, you know, she has, I think she said high cholesterol and PTOS. And then she shows him that earlier that morning, she had got a email from the doctor saying that she needs to come in and have a test work done because her mammogram showed something in her breast so she becomes very upset and emotional and starts to cry and he's shocked by this news and taken off guard because she hadn't told him that yet so he was like you know I got you I'm on you know work this out we gonna figure it out and she was just like be quiet Glenn just be quiet and one thing that she said in her confession was that we supposed to be married but he's moving like a single man I agree because that's not a decision that you just make on your own and then surprise your wife with it. That's just totally irresponsible for a husband and a father. Then it stars baby shower. Now it started the only one that got kids or did the other one have a kid too? I can't remember. So don't give me the line. And JJ and Shantae Sophia <laughs> Gucci are not there. But JJ's father, stepmother, sister, and other family members are there. Latrice and Tamara come to support, and they feel like JJ should have been there to support his daughter. I agree. If it was nothing just to show your face, in and out, I agree that he should have been there. You don't have to say anything to Selena. You know what I'm saying? But to each their own. Selena, after the party, asks star how she feels about the fact that her dad didn't come and she says i knew he wasn't coming sanjay says the problem was never with daddy it was with you and shantae and our issue with daddy was shantae now this is where we're probably going to you know not agree on our thoughts and opinions which is once again fine but for me my thought and my opinion on my channel is is that i feel like JJ's daughters are very, what's the word I want to say? I don't want to even say selective. They basically, they want to be in grown folk situations, but then they don't want to look at it objectively. They're just naturally siding with their mom, despite the fact that your mom has played a hand in this situation. We're not going to sit up here and negate the fact that Gucci took care of y'all when y'all were kids. She took care of y'all. No matter how much y'all want to downplay it, act like it didn't happen. Your mama was absent for a time period in your life where she was off doing whatever the hell she was doing. And your daddy and Gucci took care of y'all. Let's not forget that Gucci's daughter, even said that she focused so much on them girls to the own detriment of their relationship where her own daughter felt like you know she was putting them over her now how is two things gonna be said where the daughter is saying that yeah my own mama put y'all over me but y'all saying that the lady didn't do nothing for y'all get out of here y'all just trying to save face to protect y'all mama and that's fine you know you can love and protect your mama but we're not gonna lie on what somebody else has done for you now whether you like her or not that's a whole nother conversation but obviously that lady was there for y'all and helped your father to take care of you all. I don't think that Gucci is a horrible person. I think that the situation that Gucci and Selena is in is very childish. It's very immature on both ends, both ends. But we're also, for me, 
I'm not going to negate the fact that that fight was caused by Selena. When that lady came into that party, she did not have to speak to you. You the one came at her in an aggressive manner. Thompson, you can't speak this, that, and the third or whatever. Like, girl, we're not going to do that. You're not going to talk to me no any kind of way. So I personally feel like at this point, Everything has been said and done. There has been an altercation. There has been police involved, the courts involved, and it has gotten way out of control, way out of control. Is there a conversation that needs to be taking place between Gucci and Selena? Yes. Is there a conversation that needs to happen between Selena and JJ? Yes. Is there a conversation that needs to happen with Gucci, Selena, and JJ? Yes, yes, and yes. Because at the end of the day, no, we don't have to talk to each other or see each other, but it can't be like this. Because at the end of the day, we have children together and now we have grandchildren with each other. We're going to see each other. If not once a year, maybe twice a year at the kids' birthdays. Other than that, we don't have to deal with each other. You know what I'm saying? But it shouldn't be all of this. And I feel like the girls aren't helping the situation either by not being neutral, unbiased parties in the situation. So JJ is at home cleaning the pool. They have a huge house too. I didn't realize that JJ uh, house was that big. Go ahead, JJ and Gucci. And Gucci comes outside as he's cleaning the pool. And he says that, you know, he didn't want to go to the baby shower because he don't want to have anything to do with Selena. He is done with Selena. He has wiped his hands of her. Gucci, um, however, feels like, Enough is enough and we need to settle this. You know, I understand how you feel, but it's gotten way out of hand. You know, she could be one of those people that be like, mm, my husband don't F with her. I ain't going to F with her. You know, I ain't going to F with the kids. He mad at him. I don't care. Let him do what he got to do. You know, whatever. She's not taking that stand. She's actually trying to help and change the situation because there are stepmothers out there that don't care to have a relationship with the man's children that don't care, you know what I'm saying? But the lady is trying, and you got to give her that. Even when he's not even trying, she's trying to figure this out. And she tells him that she talked to her lawyer, and her lawyer basically said that if she wants to have a sit-down conversation with Selena, she can. <clears throat> so she says at some point she does want to talk to Selena. Not right now, but she does. Um... Gucci says that she also wants to fix things with Star and realizes that she can't be out here, you know, talking about her mama and all of that type of stuff. And she needs to do better on for the betterment of the kids, period. Now, here's my thing. Is it just, just that she has an issue with Star and not Sky and Sanjay? I'm I'm so confused of why she just wants to work on her relationship with Star. Because it seems to me like Sanjay and Sky don't really care for her either. So I was a little confused by that. But JJ says that they don't want you to talk about their mama, but their mama can sit over there and throw a brick and hide her hands. I agree. I agree. I agree. Like I said, them girls are... Very team mom, and that's a mama, I get it, I get it, but you got to hold your mama accountable for the things that she says and does as well. That's why I feel like it's not just one of them that is in fault. I feel like both of them are at fault. So, um, JJ also says, I want them to have a relationship with their mom. I do. If I'm not dealing with her, what the hell are you going to look like sitting there dealing with her too? talking about Gucci. He says, you don't sit there and try to befriend someone who tried to ruin your relationship or your God darn money. And in all actuality, that's how I feel about things. Once you cross that line, I don't want nothing to do with you. So I get where he's coming from. I get where he's coming from as far as he feels like Selena tried to ruin a relationship, trying to ruin her bag, meaning her being on the show, you know, with the whole fight and all of that type of situation, all that type of things. So I get where he's saying, you know, in life, we don't even try to mend fences with somebody like that. But this is still the mother of your children. So once again, some type of peace is going to have to come. Y'all don't ever have to speak to each other for real, for real, but y'all going to have to come to some type of 
conclusion with this whole entire thing. If I was Gucci, would I ever want to actually befriend Selena? No, but I do feel like a conversation needs to be had. So Gucci says, you know, I understand what you're saying, but my mom died when I was a little girl and I had a stepmom and I gave her hell. And when I got older, I looked through the lens of an adult in the same position. It seemed like it's rewriting itself. Of course, if you don't want me to have a conversation with your ex, I won't. But let me begin to start spending more time with Star. Let me take control of that situation and you can work through your own feelings. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that, and I liked the compromise that Gucci put on the table. Okay, you don't want me to have a conversation with Selena? Got it. Put that to the other side of the table. But at least let me work on my relationship with your daughter while you work through your own feelings and issues with your daughters and your ex. So once again, that lady is trying. She is trying and she's putting forth the effort to mend things and to try to get everything on track, even when her own husband and those girls' father don't even want to do it. So I don't understand how Gucci gets villainized. I really honestly don't because once again, she don't have to do none of this. She can leave it as it is and not care. Most women will rejoice in the fact most vindictive women will rejoice in the fact that hmm, he ain't got no relationship with his kids. I got them all to myself. You know what I'm saying? She's not doing that. So I don't understand why people try to villainize that lady. So um, after that, JJ says, I love you to death to even put your heart out there to have a conversation with my girls. And I agree with that because once again, most people would have been like, fuck them kids, <laughs> especially with how his daughters do her. And she is putting her self back out there to them and risking rejection, you know? And he says, I respect that. But at the same time, that's going to come in time. But they got to be taught daddy lessons first. And I saw a lot of people on the Internet saying JJ wrong for not going to the baby shower and not talking to them and everything. Y'all can't say that that man wrong. We only see 45 minutes of these people lives every week when it comes on and basically out of that 45 minutes we might get a, a, a seven minute total of one person's storyline you don't know all of the ups and downs and the things that have gone on in that family and from what we've seen JJ has been an exceptional father to them kids that's one thing that you will never be able to say about that man that he don't love and take care of them girls and that he did not step up to the plate when they own mama didn't step up to the plate Let's not forget that much. That man at one point was being daddy and mama. Okay. So we're not going to sit up here and act like this man don't have a right to his feelings because everybody does. And sometimes you do have to teach children tough love because he seems like the type of father that is given chance at the chance at the chance at the chance and probably spoiled them girls and this, this, that, and the third. And sometimes you do have to pull away. For y'all to understand that y'all not going to just be able to say and do what y'all want to do and walk all over me and think that I'm just supposed to be like, well, they're my daughters. No, y'all grown now. Y'all grown. This is a different dynamic. So I don't honestly truly blame JJ for stepping back because sometimes you need to do that as a parent to teach your kids. Now, I don't agree with it going on for too long. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you have to take drastic measures in order to see change. Tisha goes put put golfing with her daddy and she talks to her father about Glenn quitting his job and the mammogram and she breaks down and cries even though I ain't see no tears to her daddy um you know he hugged her and was there for her and you know tells her that they're going to make it through this it was a nice scene to see her and her father gotta say that the daddies is looking good her daddy look good for his age and Marie daddy look good for his age as well uh Tisha at the end of the episode hosts an improv class with the Bells Gucci and Tamara, Marie, and Akisha are the first to get there. And they learn that Latrice is going to bring Selena. And, of course, they're very taken aback because everybody knows that she has this protective order against Selena, meaning they cannot be in the same room with each other. So she basically was like, you know, I wish I would have been told that before we came all the way here. And Tisha says, well, I just found out on my way here 
I don't know if I really believe that, especially by the way that she was handling the situation. And Gucci was like, well, I'm just letting you know that, you know, when she gets her, I'm going to have to leave. And it's not just because of the protective order. It's also because of what JJ asked of her, you know, and Tisha in her confessional says, we know that she's bringing Selena and that's not wrong. So what if she's going to come? This is an opportunity to show teamwork. And it's just like, it's so what to you, but it's not so what to her. These girls had a physical altercation. You already know that it can go there between them. So why would you even want to have them both in the same room, especially being caught off guard? And once again, it goes back to Tisha is very selfish. And it's all about what Tisha wants and how Tisha feels, and she negates other people's feelings towards subjects. It's like, if she's good with that person, then you should be too. And that's not how life works. And I noticed that she does that with Marie, and now she's doing that with Gucci. And it's not fair. It's it's really not. Like You can't tell nobody, you know, that, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It is that big of a deal, because then if they get to fighting again, then what? Oh, I guess it still ain't gonna be that big of a deal. Okay. So, um, Latrice arrives and she arrives with a guest, but the guest is not Selena. It's Antoinette <laughs> and everybody's shocked to see her. Everybody's shocked because they have not seen her film with her since season one. Baby, it was Marie face because Marie is me when I don't like a person and I don't F with them and some F shit is going down. Marie was sitting there and did not change her face at all and was giving them the stank side eye because I don't understand how y'all don't see the games that are being played when it comes with Latrice. And once again, I understand it's Latrice fans out there. Congratulations, happy for you. But Latrice plays games all day long. If you notice this season, Marie ain't said nothing to that girl. She doesn't engage with her. She has not said nothing snarky to her or anything. She acts like she's not even there in the room when she comes in. But Latrice plays these games knowing that, A, Antoinette got issues with some of the women in that room and the fact that she didn't tell anybody, she just pops up with her. You being messy. You being messy. You knew exactly what you were doing. And Marie was sitting there peeping the F. Mm, that was going on and was looking like <laughs> see this is what I'm talking about this is exactly what I'm talking about so Tisha was really caught off guard but she hugged her and was like hey Antoinette and Antoinette hugged her and all of that stuff and I'm like Antoinette if you got issues with her what you hugging her for y'all all fugazi so they get back to doing the improv lessons where they're impersonating one another and Tisha asks if they want to do it. And here go Antoinette, right off rip. I can't think of a nice impression, but I'll do one. Like being messy, bringing down the mood, being snarky. And Marie was looking at her like, who asked you to come, first of all? And I didn't like the energy that Antoinette brought. Like, once again, I understand that you got issues with certain people, but don't be coming to her with that little stank ass attitude. Alvin and the chipmunks like girl girl get out so she gets up and she does an impersonation of Leticia and Akeisha then Latrice gets up and does an impersonation of Marie like are you obsessed like what why would you do like once again you being funny because you know we don't even rock with each other like that so what are you getting up doing an impersonation of me for but Marie laughed it off so then as they're doing the exercises selena comes to everybody's surprise and as soon as gucci sees her she was like oh, oh time to go gotta go so her and akisha head out because akisha rode with her and here go tisha sophia sophia wait come back so she get to running after her saying you don't need to leave this situation give me 15 minutes because i got something to tell y'all as a group and she was like look i'll give you 15 minutes but after that, I got to go, okay? So she goes back into the room or whatever. And I'm guessing what she needs to tell them is that they're going on this trip to New Orleans or whatever. So they go all go back in the room. And I'm 
still not understanding the protective order. If is the protective order like a restraining order where they're not supposed to be in a, in each other's presence? I'm so confused. I don't get it, but whatever. So Tisha starts her speech and she was like, we're on a train right now, but we have to figure out how to get there without having a conversation. And here go Antoinette. I'll lead it. And Tisha was like, well, let me finish. You know, you haven't even been here. Like, girl, know your place. Know your place. You just a little friend of this season. Simmer down. Simmer down. Like she was doing the most to me and it was getting on my nerves. And Antoinette was like, I'll tell you what happened from the start. The problem is the collective doesn't support the collective. We started attacking each other, um, that it destroyed our businesses instead of helping them. So it was very easy for me to say, I'm not doing this anymore. It's not good for my brand. Okay, well, I'm happy you said we because you were a part of that. And okay, you left because the show was toxic and ruining people's brands. Why the fuck are you back then? Why are you back? If this show was so toxic and messy and nobody supports each other, why are you back? Why are you back? If you got issues with these girls, why are you back? Even Tamara was looking like, because you know her and Tamara didn't like each other. So once again, why are you back? Why are you here? Because you need the money. You need to promote your dental place. Like, I'm so confused. Tisha then says what would it take to move on Tamara says it's trust if you feel like you've been stabbed in the back and you've never done anything to someone and they do so, do you so dirty what the heck did I do to you referencing Marie Marie then turns to the producers and says I didn't hit a major victory in my life I can't entertain none of this it's too negative and that's the main thing that she has been saying since episode one of this season. It's obvious that Marie is in a different place in her life because she's walking away. She's not even engaging with these girls. You can tell that she's happy, she's healthy, and she's thriving. And if you are in that place in your life, you really try to avoid negative situations at all costs. I could honestly see Marie not coming back next season if they get a next season because she don't have time for this mess. Like, wh why? Why? I don't F with y'all. So why would I? Like, I'm not going to pretend for these cameras. You know what I'm saying? Does Tamara have a right to feel some type of way about the fact that Marie and Tisha, let's not forget that part, brought that man or was trying to get that man on camera. Or I forgot if he was on camera or not. But I'm still trying to figure out why is it all blamed on Marie and not Tisha? Because I could have sworn that they did that together. But okay. I felt like, it was wrong, but at the same time, Tamara is a liar. <laughs> Tamara is a liar, a liar, a liar. So I don't really trust them to come out of her mouth. So Tisha says, you know, if we don't fix this, then it ain't going to be no bail collective. And it sounded like they might have been told or she might have been told, y'all going to have to get the dynamics together or we're not going to be able to have any show if nobody likes each other and nobody wants to fit with each other and all of this. So here go Latrice saying, I can work on it with you and you and you and you but of course talking about marie and marie was like i gotta go and tisha was like no marie you gotta stay you can't leave and she was like i gotta go i got the most to lose in here than everybody and latrice starting mess you ain't got ish to lose <clears throat> baby i'm trying to baby I'm trying to figure out what she got to lose. Girl, if you don't go get a fidget spinner or something with your fidgeting tick tock, girl, snap, pop, a, pop and crackle, whatever. What is wrong with you? Do you itch? What is your problem, girl? Sit down. Put your hands in your lap. Squeeze them tight. Oh. Girl. My God, you can't talk about nobody. Huh. So Marie was like, see, I'm being triggered. Do you hear what is going on in this room? 
Like she looking Tisha right in the face. Like you not going to sit up here and play in my face and act like you don't see that this girl is steady trying to antagonize me to get a rise out of me and get me to go there with her. And I'm refusing to. And this is what I don't like about Letitia. And this is why I don't understand my, why Marie is her friend because she chooses Latrice's feelings over Marie every time and act like Marie is the bad guy when she blatantly sees that Latrice keep on trying to with this girl. Like, I'm just so not understanding this. And Marie, you could tell, was like, like, girl, don't act like you don't see what's going on. And so, um, Tisha was like, that's why you and Latrice go back and forth because neither of y'all listen. And Marie says, I'm not going back and forth. Latrice then says, I'm not going back and forth with someone that's lesser than me. First of all, we not about to do this. We not about to sit up here and say that somebody is lesser than you. Girl, you don't even run your household. You don't even run yourself. You let a whole man control your every thought, emotion, feeling, step, blink, everything. So for you to sit up here and try to say that somebody is lesser than you is just downright ignorant okay least marie is self-made if you divorce that man tomorrow i bet you you ain't leaving with nothing but your name mm-hmm mm-hmm girl get out of here stop let's not do that i felt like that was very trash of her to say but once again only thing that Letitia said was, Latrice, stop. Latrice, stop. And no, it ain't no Latrice, stop. It's like, girl, we're not about to do that. You're not about to talk about my friend like that. Because once again, if Marie is such your great friend, why don't you ever stick up for her? That's what b blows me. I don't understand why Marie even liked Letitia. First of all, she can't dress. She too fat for the clothes she be wearing. Her wigs be busted. Like everything about her is just, ugh. like, no, she can't even sit with you, Marie. Like, no, 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 no. So Marie was like, do you not hear this ish? Do you not hear this ish? And he was like, yeah, I do. Okay, yeah, you do. Then what? Girl, then the episode went off. Let me tell you something. Marie, Marie is in a better place than I will ever be in life because ain't no way I would have sat there and let Latrice talk to me crazy like that. Because I would have choked her out. Point blank in the period. Because now you want to act tough. Okay. 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 So y'all cannot sit up there and say that Marie been bothering that lady because she is not. It's been all the trees. All the trees. And if somebody pop her in the mouth, she gonna be deserving of it. And then you sitting up here, Tisha sticking up for Latrice when she brought Antoinette in there knowing damn well she had an issue with you and knowing that she came there that she brought her there to start with you but you want to be her friend so bad that girl don't f with you and she won't after what happened between y'all last season you can forget about you and latrice ever being cool like that no matter how much you try and cry she ain't gonna ever f with you like that stop anywho i'm gonna give this week's episode of bell collective and A, it got me mad. It riled me up. Y'all let me know down below in the comment section what y'all thought about this week's episode. Let's talk about it. Make sure to thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications so you know my videos drop. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.